You better clap better than that. I said clap. You don't know how to clap. You know, if if you know in Nigeria we don't we don't appreciate ourselves. If they told you I was an American, you would have been clapping. Clap. Thank you. I'm here to try and change your life. You can't even clap. Okay. Well, I'm not a lawyer. I'm a chartered accountant by training, but you know, life sort of makes you drift away from some of these things. Um, I'm a certified coach. I'm also uh, a certified facilitator in you know a number of other things. So I'm just an ideas man, and I just help people and organizations get better. That's all I do. Okay. So let, let's go straight to the to the talk because of our time. Three big questions for entrepreneurial minds. You know, uh, when uh, Ken and uh, Chinedu said I should come and give a talk. Is that I should come and talk about, uh, uh, what did you guys say? Funding, I said I don't know anything about that. Let uh, Tommy come and tell them about funding. I'll just talk about some other interesting things. So I thought, okay, I, I, I'll share three questions for entrepreneurial minds. Go to the next uh, slide. Question one, does money precede ideas? And I think Tony partly addressed that. In the process of getting this bottle of water, what comes first? The bottle or the water? No, seriously. That's if I'm trying to produce this bottle of water, what's going to come first? The water. Before the bottle. Are you guys serious? Is it the water before the bottle? Seriously. You're right, you're right. So don't get confused. Money is like the bottle. Get the water first. And it's so important because people think, just give me the money. And, and to me, I alluded to that. Give me five million dollars, man. I'll just do this business. Which business do you want to do? <laughs> See, some business, some techie business, e-commerce, Q-commerce, B-commerce. He so said, what is it about? He said, bring the money first. There's no fool in the world like that. you never get that money. Get the idea. Next slide. Money is first a bank of ideas to take to the bank, where a bank will include people like Tommy or any financier, before it becomes banknotes that you can take to the bank. You must have the ideas first. It is the ideas that people put money into. People don't put money into talk. They don't put money into boost. Or just uh, some wishy-washy thoughts. If you have concrete ideas, people put money into them. Get the idea first. Next slide. Money is the outcome of ideas. Not the input for ideas. Money is like the end point, really. When you get the idea, if it's good, people who have money, you know they want to make more money. You agree? They want to multiply their money. But they don't have all the ideas. So if they see a good idea, they'll latch onto it. Next slide. Money, I say, is intrinsically useless without something worthwhile to spend it on. You see, it's when you don't have money that you don't really understand how useless money is. 
people who have money finally understand that this money is just very useless. Next slide. <laughs> Ask these guys. Those three guys in that cloud. They are now saying, what are we going to do with this money? It's too much. So they start to dash it out. They finally discover that money is really intrinsically useless. So money should first become a mentality before it becomes a reality. And, and I think Tony partly alluded to that point. In my kind of work, I give freebies. I just give freebies. I say, okay, all right, don't pay, just, I'll do it for you, don't worry. Because I know that if I can press that idea into your head, you eventually pay for it. So it doesn't matter. But in our kind of world, we're so framed to think that money is everything. Give me money, give me money, give me money, give me money. You need to have the right mentality. In fact, at this stage, you need to start having the mentality of Bill Gates. That's why Wanchuku was saying that um, people will not just want to come and buy your idea for a t-shirt. He says, no, bring real stuff. So money should be, first of all, a mentality. That is, you have to have the right mentality about money before money becomes a reality to you. Next slide. You know, Aliko Dangote was named one of the 100 most influential, Time Magazine's 100 most influential people of 2014. So I went to read the citation for Aliko. Guess who wrote the citation for Aliko Dangote? Any idea? You don't read those things. Who did? Bill Gates. Yes. So, I, and then I read the citation. Bill Gates said nothing about Aliko's businesses. He was talking about his philanthropy, how they were trying to change healthcare, how they were trying to change agriculture, and all the other non-business things that Aliko was doing. So that question on top of the slide remains. How many of today's billionaires started their businesses with more than $5,000? You know that song? Money, money, money. Old school people like Tommy would know that song. <laughs> All was sunny in the rich man's world. It's not that sunny. It's really not. So if you start to think about this $5,000, this $10,000, this $1 million, when you haven't carefully thought about your idea, that's not going to work. It won't work at all. Next slide. Question two. Is it going to be fun? I've spent almost 30 years of my life working for organizations. And then after 28 years, I thought this so boring. But it took me 28 years to realize I was living a very boring life. And then when I finally was delivered from boring life, I said, wow, praise God. So now I live an exciting life, a fun life. Do I look like I'm at work? This is what I do every day for a living, just share ideas. It's fun. 
So if that thing is not going to be fun, don't bother. Don't bother. Because when the trying times come, you'll run away. But if it's fun, and you're really having fun, when difficulty comes, then you can scale, you can scale it with the fun. Next slide. I picked this quote from uh, some Indian entrepreneur. If you love your work and it gives your life a meaning, then you will have fun through the difficult times. You will find it in your heart to keep going. You will never lose hope. Next slide. Richard Branson. I, for one, would rather be a nice guy working with great people, having fun with a small, successful business than a miserable guy heading up a hugely profitable multinational mega cop. Well, that's your call. Do you know there are a lot of sad CEOs? Do you know that? Miserable CEOs. They're so miserable, some of them get home and beat their wives. That's a horrible life. But um, Raphael is not that type of CEO. I want you call to me. All these guys here, these are these are guys that are they're just having fun. See this one now. Don't do Jumia, finish Jumia, you don't go do super Jumia and so on and so forth. You know. <laughs> he's having fun. That's all he's doing. He's having fun. Is it easy? It's by no means easy. But the fun makes it easier. Next slide. And that's the third question. Do I really need an office? Do you need an office? Whether tech or non-tech, do you really need an office? Floor space is very expensive in East Lagos. Even if you go to a gondo, what the landlord will be telling you there, you'll be surprised. So I finally found out, after 28 years, that an office is just a place where your brain is functioning. It's an office. It's thing about office. Tie. You know, I used to wear those coats. I started out wearing coats. They will coat into jacket, into tie, and strap your neck, and, you know, strangle yourself. The reality is that most of us don't really need an office. And I was consoled by Richard Branson. Next slide. He said, a good leader doesn't get stuck behind a desk. I've never worked in an office. When I saw that, I said, great. Wow. Maybe that's why he makes so much money. He doesn't work in an office. You know, an office can be quite constraining. You come, sit down. After a while, right, even the chair will recognize your... So that if somebody else sits there, they'll say, it's not your chair. Then we'll start struggling for stapler. And uh, what are those other things they struggle for in an office? Stapler, folder, uh -huh, highlighter, pen. It's my pen. It's not your own. I saw it there. I took it. Believe me, those things happen in an office. Like secondary school children. So I must tell you, you really don't need an office. You don't need an office. An office is just anywhere where you can think, celebrate your ideas to yourself first, then look for someone who will celebrate your ideas and give you money to push your ideas forward. That's, of course, in your kind of world. In my kind of world, you don't even need anybody to come and invest in any idea. You just, first of all, get the idea. Then you start to sell the idea like that. It's like Google and Ekba. But you earn more than Google and Ekba. I think that's my final slide. So ideas supersede money. Fun welcomes the difficulty of the journey. And the value of an office is often exaggerated. Thank you very much.